sea level rise in the Everglades is real. The entirety of South Florida's ecosystem is being affected. Now, imagine if South Florida's orchestra of life was threatened. From an Everglades standpoint, from a South Florida standpoint, sea level rise means a lot more than just the encroachment along the coastline. It also means that the low-lying interior, like the Everglades and stuff, are suddenly going to have pressure coming from underneath and pushing up. And so besides the salt water coming over the edge, we're going to get this sort of pushing up of fresh water in the center, and so there's going to be flooding everywhere. The water in South Florida does not flow freely on its own, as it uses bedrock to aid its travel. The bedrock under Florida is not solid. It has holes in it. This is the sort of um, bedrock we have, which means that water travels into it easily and out of it easily. And when salt water is coming in from the ocean, it can push up and just travel upwards underground. It doesn't have to have, you know, storm sewer or anything to be able to get up upwards. So the more that sea level rises, the more problems there are, not just by the coast, but even inland with sea level rise. We're already seeing it happen. The future is now in the Everglades. It's not um, something that we're anticipating. It's something that's happening right now. So as seawater begins to intrude into freshwater wetlands, you see just entire um, wetland collapse. The vegetation is affected. The water um, quality is affected. Basically, a lot of places that had been freshwater peat, freshwater marshes are now becoming more salt water. So the elevation, the land elevation up even by Tamiami Trail is only six and a half to seven feet. So if, if when sea level rise gets to six or seven feet, almost all of Everglades National Park will be underwater. <laughs> We're going to about to take a little walk through what's called an area of the Big Cypress. We call this uh, Dayhoff's. Eric Kimmel has been a long-standing defender of the Everglades since he was a boy. Being exposed to the Everglades has made Eric realize just how important it is to protect the ecosystem of South Florida. Because this is something I have, it's, even though this is considered anecdotal evidence, not scientific, but over a 50 year period I've seen this change over the seasons. Of course you're going to have wetter and drier years where this would be drier naturally, but as a rule there should have been at least a half inch to an inch of water coming across this prairie. We've made a tremendous amount of progress, I would say, in the last seven years, really. And um, some of the sort of big steps forward that we've made are really in those, in that central and southern Everglades restoration effort. That's the part of Everglades restoration that probably has the biggest impact on, sea, on combating sea level rise. The public, maybe the reason that they're not as engaged is that they, these issues seem overwhelming. They, they, well, what can I do to respond? There are responses and um, government's working on a lot of them, the private sector is working on a lot of them, and it's just a matter of putting our you know, nose to the grindstone and getting these projects implemented. These projects include protecting water quality, protecting water storage needs, and restoring the historic water flow from Lake Okeechobee to the Everglades. The, the one take-home message that everybody needs to realize is the Everglades is our best filter, our best in terms of water quality. It's our best sponge in terms of soaking up flood water and even sea level rise. I mean, it's the best friend we have if we want to continue to live in South Florida, right? And so we are both the problem and the solution. We can keep South Florida and the Everglades vibrating with sound for years to come, but we must work together.